Good morning to you. This is Nick Adams again here visiting South Carolina from Australia and I'm so happy to be here with Mr. Eddie McCain. Great to be here. A great man who uh, has served this country and uh, took an oath to protect America from all enemies both foreign and domestic and that's why he's running for office and that's why I think he knows exactly what needs to happen for this country to get right back on track. So I'm happy to endorse him this morning. Thank you. So all of the presenters have done a great job this morning, and we've got two more folks. Eddie McCain, who's running for the House, District 39. Eddie, come on up. Say yeah. the words. Yeah, and, and I'm yeah. proud to say that I'm the only person that Steve Isom actually endorses. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. There we go. There we go. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, just, just, just real quick. You know, on my card here, and. Uh, I, I got a little name, Freedom Nuts, we're nuts about freedom. And sometimes I get asked about that question, you know, why you want to be called a freedom nut and that type of thing. Well, just real quick here, because I know we run out of time, but um, I asked a question a few minutes ago to our keynote speaker here, what does actually does freedom mean to him or somebody that lives outside of the United States? Because I believe, every, it seems like every day from the county level to the federal level, we're losing our freedoms. And I believe the state needs more people, more representatives, who are not afraid to stand up when the federal government creates legislation such as the Patriot Act, the North, uh, North uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, any kind of legislation that has to do with taking away your Bill of Rights. Because we're, we're losing it all the time. At the county level, it's already been addressed where they're trying to take away your property rights. They're trying to tell, they want to be able to, to uh, send a deputy sheriff out through neighborhoods and uh, looking in yards, and if they see a portable storage building that is not on a foundation or not on a slab, in other words, you didn't have to, to, uh, to pay a construction fee or, or get a license to build it, they want to be able to find you $500. They want to be able to find you five hundred dollars if you go on vacation and the monsoon season comes through here and your grass jumps eight to ten inches before you can get back home. They want to be able to find you five hundred dollars because your grass is too tall. A day. A day. A day. Five hundred a day plus court costs. That's this. This is not. Do you, this is nothing more than certain people sitting back trying to think of creative ways to generate revenue. And when they generate revenue, it means one thing. It means taking money out of your pocket. And I am totally against any of that. I'm against the Patriot Act. I'm against the National Defense Authorization Act. And at the state level, I never see anybody from the state house standing up, at least publicly, and saying the federal government is wrong. Our congressman is wrong for voting for it. We're not going to allow federal agents to come into our county, into our state, and arrest our people for violating, for, for violating those, those, uh, those acts. You can't, nobody wants terrorists, okay, and I, and I you know, and I, I took an oath, I, I retired from the army, I took an oath that I told very dearly to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign or domestic. And I believe quite often we need to be more concerned about the domestic enemies of our Constitution than we need to be worried about foreign people. Most foreign people have no clue what our Constitution is. It's the domestic people who are trampling on our Constitution and taking away our rights. Because technically today, and I have verified, the, and I've seen the list, there's a list of potential, of what law enforcement has is a list of potential domestic terrorists. In other words, they get a list out, who do we look for? So we know who's about to blow up a building. If you are a veteran, you are a potential terrorist. Well, that's half of South Carolina. Uh -oh. That's me. <laughs> okay? If you're if you're the I had a police officer tell me that on that list are Pentecostals. I guess they think that speaking in tongues is some kind of underlying language of communication to, to discuss how to blow up buildings or something. I don't know. But what I'm trying to tell you is there are a lot of they, they come up with a lot of, of uh, of common denominators on who might be a potential terrorist. And they can come up and they can arrest you. And this might not place, take place next week, but it's in law, which means it can take place 10 years from now. 
where they can come up, they can grab you out of your house, they can haul you away, put you in jail, you don't get a lawyer, you don't get a trial date, your family doesn't have to know where you're at, and they can take you out of the country. That is a law right now. Now, it hasn't been implemented, to my knowledge. It hasn't been used yet. And it may not be used this week or next week, but it could be used next year. How would you know if it was? That's a good point. That's a good point. You know, you may see somebody on a milk carton. You may think they were kidnapped. They were kidnapped by the government. And just somebody knows about it. But that's when the, that's when the federal, we need somebody can stand up for that. My, my core values are small government, free enterprise, and local decision making. Free enterprise in the United States is a thing of the past. It is no longer, you know, I, my, I'm, I'm trying to be a representative for Western Lexington County and for about two-thirds of Saluda County. Let me tell you something. Saluda County is poor. The county doesn't even have a hospital. There's not a four-lane highway in the county. There's only one grocery store in the entire county. Okay, it's a very poor county. All industry has left except for the Amic chicken plant. All industry is going overseas. Okay, there's nothing there. So my, so my thought is, all these people here with God-given talents and gifts, how come they can't start their own home-based business? Why can't this single mom over here who, who can't afford to, to go work a minimum wage job and cover babysitting costs, if she can bake cakes and pies and cookies, why can't she bake cakes, pies and cookies in her house and sell them? Which she can't do it because we have DHEC. And D had to come in here and say, well, look, you don't have a, a recognized restaurant-type equipment in here, so you can't do that. Or well, suppose this young guy over here took auto shopping while he was going through high school, and he can turn wrenches pretty good. He can work on lawnmowers. But guess what? He can't, he can't open up a shop in his yard to work on people's lawnmowers and weed eaters because there's so many regulations that dictate where he can open it up. He's got to have a license. He's got to pay the county. He's got to pay the, the city, the state. We make it almost, we're in a, one of the worst economic times of this century, and we're making it impossible for the average person who doesn't have any money, he doesn't have a whole lot of money to go buy a franchise, he doesn't have any money to go out and invest into a business. Maybe he has a little bit of skill that he can put together to generate his own income, but he can't do it. He'll go to jail. So the only alternative is, is to work a minimum wage job or to uh, not work at all. Just sit, well, if the government ain't gonna let me work in my own house and generate all the income, I'll just draw food stamps and, and get in all the other government subsidies I can get. I, I believe our government has pulled a rug right out from under the feet of many people. And I, I realize that DHEC is a powerful organization and don't get me wrong, I know, it, I know we have to have some type of regulation. Nobody wants sewage pouring into the rivers, and nobody wants smoke pollution coming out. But when it comes to employment, somebody being able to, you have the God-given right to eat and sleep in a secure environment. You have the right to pursue that. And if government hinders you from making money, then government is hindering you from your basic rights of being able to eat and being able to, to sleep and live in a secure environment. That's got to stop. That's got to stop. Um, I'll stand up for that. That's why I use that name freedom because I, I believe we're losing our freedoms. We're losing them every day. I, you know, I agree with the West when it comes to the county. I can't believe that we even have that big, huge cathedral county administration building. You know, I, I took my little iPhone camera and went in there and, and videotaped it and, and put it on YouTube <coughs> because it's. Government should not, county government employees should not work in a cathedral type environment with spiral staircases and all the luxuries of that building when the average small business person works in just a, a, a small shop, but yet they're the ones that paid for it. It doesn't make sense. It's, 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 not, it's not acceptable. And uh, we, anyway, we need, you know, we need somebody in the state house who is not afraid to stand up for individual rights and for um, individual liberties and for, for, like Wes said, just for common sense to be able to take care of people, let people take care of themselves. Government prevents people from taking care of themselves. Therefore, they get lazy because they don't see any options and they just allow government to take care of them.
That's what's happening. That's what we got to stop. All right. Skip. Skip. Any questions?